Thank you very much. What's up? How you guys doing? Good? Oh, man, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, happy to be away from my wife for a little while. Um, my wife and I got into an epic fight before I came to Canada. Epic, not big. There's a difference in a relationship between a big fight and an epic fight. Like a big fight is, you better sleep on the couch tonight. An epic fight is, you better not go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Little difference there. My wife says I'm lazy and unprepared, and I'm not gonna lie to you people, I'm lazy and unprepared. But see, my wife's part of the problem because she's overprepared. My wife is fucking ready right now for anything right now. My, I'm not making this up. My wife is so prepared and ready. When she rides in a taxi cab, she rips one strand of hair out of her head, leaves it in the back seat in case the driver murders her, they could trace back the DNA to see who did it, okay? That's who I'm living with, everybody. Look, the women out here are like, that's a good idea, though. That's, I gotta, I gotta watch more Law and Order. That's, one thing my wife and I were fighting about recently was uh, buying a home. And they say, when you and your significant other purchase a home, you know which one it is right when you walk in. You walk in and you say, this is it. This is where we're gonna raise our family. Guys, I looked at 41 houses. <laughs> I hated every one of them. And my wife, of course, falls in love with this old colonial that was a piece of shit that I hated. And I didn't like it, because when I went inside and I went to the basement, I just smelled something funny. I saw work that needed to be done in the house. And I was like, this place, I just saw the money leaving our account. You know, I was like, this is, this is gonna cost us a lot of money. And the excuses came out. My wife goes, no, no, babe, that's how basements smell. <laughs> she goes, no, I swear to God, that's how a basement should smell. She goes, it actually smelled like my grandmother's basement. The first thing I thought of was my grandmother when I smelled that basement. And I was like, well, your grandmother had water damage. Okay. <laughs> and a shitty inspector. Like, I'm not gonna let the scent of your grandparents' failure fuck us out of money the next 20 years. <laughs> We're not living here. I'm a dad during the day at home, a stay-at-home dad. I got a five-year-old little boy. I have a two-year-old baby girl. I'm exhausted. I'd like to tell everybody in this beautiful theater here something from the bottom of my heart. If you ever thought you were tired, okay? If you ever thought you felt exhaustion in your life and you don't have two babies at home, fuck you, okay? <laughs> fuck you and your bullshit nine to five job when you come home and you put on Netflix and eat a snack. You uncommitted assholes know nothing, okay? You don't know tired until you've contemplated divorce and suicide on the same walk to your child's bedroom at three o'clock in the morning because you're resentful to your wife that it's your turn. <laughs> I love watching my son's problems. You ever see what a five-year-old gets upset about? They have no idea about mortgages, car payments. The other day, my son was losing his mind that I wouldn't give him an ice pop. He was losing his fucking mind. <laughs> he was begging for an ice pop like you'd beg for your life with a gun to your head. He was like, no, no, daddy, no, 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 no. He was like a black woman at a funeral. He was like, ah, no, 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 ah, and I was like, Jesus Christ, it's just an ice pop. Now I want one because apparently we have incredible ice pops in this house. Uh, but people always, like, my friends always get kind of like upset and resentful that I go home and I have a personal life and a family. They kind of bust my balls about it, you know? And, uh, you know, my buddy called me up and he tries to tell me things I can't relate to now. You know, he called me up, he's like, oh man, we were hanging out with these girls after the show. Well, I mean, you couldn't be there because you had to go home, but this chick comes back to my hotel room jumped on the bed, got completely naked, opened her legs, looked me in the eyes, and said you could do anything you want to me tonight. <laughs> I'm so far removed from that in my life, <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. 
If a woman opened her legs in front of me right now, I'd grab a baby wipe and go front to back. <laughs> I'd be like, is that a rash? You got a rash over there? We gotta get some desitin out here. That's gonna be an infection. Hey, I'm Paul Verzi, man. Montreal, you're a blast. Thank you so much. Appreciate you.